sound like we need to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble. Let me stand over here. Uh, you know, I will be 66 years old in a few weeks, and I know you're, that's amazing you. I don't look that old. I'll tell you what else. I don't feel that old either. It's amazing. I was Brent's age just a few years ago, maybe four or five. But I kind of reminiscing on the way up this morning when I was caught in a half-hour traffic jam just south of Franklin. Uh, I remember my first meetings with uh, uh, health underwriters way back when we were over at the Vanderbilt uh, building. And that was back in the mid to late 90s. And I see some faces that are familiar. Uh, Todd's still got the same amount of hair. It's a little bit different color than it was then. But, uh, but I see a lot of new people. The first time that I went to uh, our day on the hill, I thought I was in the wrong place because there was only three more people besides me. Uh, the first time I was forced to go to Capitol Conference, and I'll tell you, Bob Shute kind of shamed me so much that I felt like I had to go to Capitol Conference. Uh, there was only a couple of us. There's 11 of us going to Washington in a few weeks. And there's still room for more if you want to go. Now that's 11 from across the state. Uh, last year, I think we had 30 plus at the Day on the Hill, Chuck, uh, which is phenomenal. When we started going to the Day on the Hill, it was, well, who are you, what do you do? And I had a long conversation with Ron Ramsey's secretary administrative assistant uh, this week. And not only does she know who I am, which is somewhat an insignificant being, but she also knew who Health Underwriters was off the top of her head. So we're making huge strides. Uh, it, it's amazing how much we have grown in membership, and we have, but we've grown a huge amount in presence. We are now an organization to reckon with on the hill, and we're known. Uh, Chuck, the gentleman standing in the back back there, has done a huge amount of work of working with not only our Commissioner of Agri oh, Agriculture, gosh, I can tell you how far I go back, <laughs> the Commissioner of Insurance, but also her assistance back here. And, and when, 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 when you see immediate recognition when the two of them see each other, that's a great feeling. These people know who we are now, and a lot of it has to do with you guys. And thank you all very much. Uh, another accomplishment, and I'll have to, again, give this credit to Chuck, uh, Terry. We now have a Tennessee Health Underwriters Political Action Committee. I wanted to call it Ten Pack, but I was voted down the beer industry to uh, complain about it. <laughs> but uh, look here. We've got, he has got, the board put together. Uh, state presidents as advisors, uh, state president elect as advisors, uh, and all the regional presidents, uh, including the uh, advisors, uh, the leg advisors, legislative advisors. So that is a huge step forward. Now I know some of you have already signed up for the donations to this, and it doesn't make you know you don't have to donate a hundred dollars per month or two hundred dollars per year or whatever. Anything is appreciated. This is an instrument for us to continue to be known and recognized uh, at, on the Hill and in Washington. We've had a, a huge pack uh, for a number of years that's been very successful. Region 5 that we're in is one of the biggest contributors uh, to the pack in, in all of our districts. So we hope that Start to say 10 pack again, but Health Underwriters Pack uh, will be as vi viable as, uh, as our UPAC organization. Don't feel pressured into donating, but do so. Any little bit helps. And these guys and ladies and gentlemen on the Hill, you know, they've got expenses, they've got to run, all this kind of stuff. And, and as well as they know us, when we deliver a check to them, they also know us that much better. So uh, please, please make a contribution to that. Uh, sometimes we don't, uh, did I tell you how many is going to the Capitol Conference? 11. 
Here's the list of it. Again, there's room for more if you want to attend. I'll tell you this, if you go once, you'll wind up going back. Uh, you'll, you'll pay more attention to what's going on in Washington because you'll see on the news, you'll say, oh, I've been in those stairs and steps. I've been there. I, I know where this is. And I was thinking about this, Chuck. For whatever reason, and I don't know where it's planned or not, but every time we're in Washington, guess who we see on the street? Michael Moore. And he got his little entourage there. They're set up. They're talking all this kind of stuff. Now, like I say, I don't know if it's planned or not, but he's always there. Been there for the past several years. So it's a great trip. It's a lot of fun. It's probably going to be cold, but uh, it's, it's going to be a good trip. So if you haven't been uh, and you can go this year, you're welcome to. If you want to go next year, uh, that's even better. Uh, we have got a few of our state board of directors in this room, and if I could ask the state board, Kathy, will you stand, please? Todd, will you stand? Uh, who else we got? Chuck? Uh, I think that's all we've got here that's on the state board. Uh, the rest of them are scattered out across the state. Uh, Jonathan from Memphis is going to be state uh, uh, president next year. But I want to thank the uh, Richard. You're a HUPAC chairman, right? I didn't know that was important. That's that. It, it sure is. I apologize. <laughs> you're you're, you're so quiet back there and hid behind your computer. But Richard's a state HUPAC chairman for the state. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate your time. <coughs> now we're meeting about twice a month now by phone. And, and to give you kind of an update of what we've been meeting on is the symposium coming up in April. Now, if you may remember, we've had the symposium in the past in March uh, with a day on the hill the day before. I got good news for you. We're moving the symposium to Murfreesboro, to the convention center down there. And for those of y'all that have been to that convention center, it is fabulous. Uh, not only are we better facilities, uh, everything located on the same floor, fantastic parking uh, facilities. The other thing is, they want us. They have been chasing us for a couple of years to come down there. So, uh, and, and we needed, hopefully, more room because not only are we going to have the same vendors back that have been with us the pre previous few years, but we're also adding some vendors. News that you may not know about yet, but it's out there, is we have a new insurance carrier in Tennessee. It is a new mutual company, and they're going to be there. There's also a number of exchange vendors that are out there looking for our business. Uh, I think there's going to be like 35 of them uh, to start with, and I'm sure that's going to be whittled down pretty quickly as, as this goes forward, if it goes forward. Uh, so they're going to be there. So we needed the extra space and we needed the room to expand. Uh, the one thing that I have been concerned about the whole time is you Nashville brokers might not want to come to Murfreesboro, but please, I drive a whole lot further than it is from here to Murfreesboro every day for these meetings and I guarantee it's worth it. Uh, if you got any apprehensions about it, come one time, I think you'll be so well. But it's a great facility. Yes, sir. Is it right by the interstate too, so it's easy in and out? Actually, I think it's the first or second yeah. uh, exit going into into Murfreesboro. It's right off of that exit, uh, real close. Again, like I say, plenty of parking, all on the same floor, uh, all uh, all together and everything. So it's going to work out real, real good. Uh, what else do I need to talk about, Paul? Uh, Oh, exchanges, whether it's a good word to you or a dirty word to you or whatever, it's, it's with us. Uh, and we don't know what the outcome is going to be, but one of the first things that I learned when I was in, got into this business is you prepare for the worst case scenario. If you can handle that worst case scenario, then you can handle anything. And that's what we're doing with these exchanges. You, our organization, has been supporting a 
delegate to go to the National Exchange Committee meetings, and for whatever reason, they have to be in San Francisco. We are the only state, Chuck, am I correct on this? We're the only state out of all 50 states that have health underwriters members on this committee. Darlene Tucker, I think, hopefully everybody knows Darlene. I'll tell you how impressive she is. Chuck was, barat, was, was, was inundated by request for her to come back because she had made so much input into the first committee meeting. So she's going back at the end of January after coming back from Washington the latter part of January. And for those of y'all that know Darlene, there's not a bashful bone in her body. If she's got something to say, and she always does, and it's always good, Tennessee will be recognized again in San Francisco in the latter part of January. So any questions for right now? I see that our speaker is here. I will, uh, how does that go? What's the terminology for it? Uh, yield. There you go. I've always had a problem with that word. I will yield our first speaker. <laughs>